I've uh, taken to carrying around a copy of Zappi's Last Messiah. It's a, it's a short essay or work or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and uh, it's easy to print off and carry around in your pocket. And whenever I want a few moments mental or philosophical stimulation, I just take it out and read it. Uh, it's really gotten my mind going in fascinating directions, and I, I really love the way that it's, uh, that it's uh, taken my thinking. Um, and right now I'm dealing with the, I'm sort of chewing on the bone of anchoring and figuring out you know, what the implications of uh, that uh, subject that he brings up. Uh, Zapfi has his famous uh, big four. It's uh, the four of them, according to uh, uh, The Last Messiah, are isolation, anchoring, distraction, and sublimation. Now, anchoring is, again, the one that I'm dealing with, and according to Wiki, anchoring is the fixation of points within or construction of walls around the liquid fray of consciousness. I guess that's a quote. The anchoring mechanism provides individuals a value or an ideal that allows them to focus their attentions in a consistent manner. Zapfi also apply, applied the anchoring principle to society and stated God, church, the state, morality, fate, the laws of life, the people, the future, are all examples of collective primary anchoring firmaments. Okay. Um, anchoring is, I guess, you just decide that uh, these are the truths that I will follow, and I go from there. It's sort of a philosophical axiom, or a intellectual axiom, your anchor. Now, <laughs> the way that it's often used by people is it's used as a hostile judgment against other people's delusions, or what you believe to be someone else's delusions. I'll give you a, an example of this, and I, I hope that it's taken for the way that it's meant. Um, in this series, I'm perceived to be attacking antinatalism, so I'll give you uh, a hostile assessment of what I believe to be um, antinatalism's anchors. Um, life is uh, mostly, or the dominant thing about human existence is harm, or the most important thing, the thing with the greatest value. Um, the reason for that is um, we're worried about uh, all the various harms that can befall us and the harms that can befall us have more value than anything else because of the damage that they can do. The damage that harm can do is greater than the benefits that the non-harm that we can uh, get out of being alive. Therefore, we don't breed anymore. We don't continue life. Zapfi apparently was an antinatalist. It certainly looks pretty obvious that he was. Um, and he says that the greatest problem with existence is the moment of existential panic uh, that we get when we understand that we are uh, Stephen King's conscious puppet who is still on strings. <laughs> um, and so let's say that we accept that and then we say that, well, okay, um, the best thing for that puppet to do is to anchor itself and to not consider the fact that it's on strings, not consider the horror of existence because if you sit there and you stare into existence itself and you ponder the fundamental nature of existence, um, your brain can explode. You'll end up uh, like, uh, allegedly, what happened to Nietzsche. It wasn't syphilis, of course. It was existential horror that drove him into the nut house. Um, I don't know about that. Um, but here goes. Here's our hostile view of antinatalism. The... Uh, or Zapfian antinatalism, at least. The Zapfian antinatalist says the horror of existence is so bad uh, that the only thing that we can possibly do is to end consciousness, okay? Um, now, you become a Zapfian, you understand the horror of existence, so you want to actually do something with your newfound beliefs. What do you do about them? Well, um, you canvas other people to not have children. That is an anchor. <laughs> that takes you outside of yourself into the world around you and you try and argue with other people and talk them out of having kids. Um, you're no longer distracted. You're no longer sort of, I shouldn't say distracted, but you're no longer fixated on that moment of primal horror anymore because you've got something else to occupy your mind. Um, that is an anchor. You are, an, you are actually guilty of one of Zapfi's big four, of anchoring. Um, because antinatalism is your anchor, and then you go out and you be an antinatalist in the world. You talk people out of having kids. Vegetarian for the uh, vegetarianism, by the same token. You um, you think that uh, one of the horrors of existence is the fact that we're all cannibals and we're all eating each other on this planet. Uh, and it's not so much that in and of itself that is the problem, but it's it's a reflection on this state of existence. Um, that again. Existence is horror. 
and part of the existence that we have is that we have to cannibalize each other. So you don't concentrate on that horror, but you concentrate on um, dealing with one of the contributing factors to the horror, not the horror itself. So you go out and you spread the gospel of vegetarianism. You become a vegan yourself. You stop eating meat. You stop uh, harming anything else. You stop uh, all cruelty to animals, etc., etc. And um, you are you have therefore anchored yourself, and you're not staring into that. Uh, void of existential angst, that void of cosmic horror that is existence itself. Uh, and finally, you might go out and find whatever pronatalists are out there, and you violently abuse them on YouTube. You insult them, you uh, call them cruel, horrible people, and you seek them out and, uh, and uh, call down all kinds of curses on them, usually something along the lines of, shame on you. Um, and that too, in and of itself, you're forgetting about the actual horror itself. You're actually now going after people who are promoting the horror, or who you have decided are promoting the horror. It's uh, it's a tricky thing, and, and it points out how um, anchoring uh, is always or inevitably used as a hostile sort of um, uh, a hostile comment on someone else's point of view. Whereas, for interesting reasons, you always see Zapfi with a smirk on his face or a big smile, and apparently he was a, quite a popular comedian in his day. Um, because ultimately, when you, when, you are, when you have taken your view of anchoring as sort of a philosophical bludgeon with, it, with which to beat other people, you see the inherent in hi hypocrisy in all of that. Because what you're doing is, you're anchoring yourself. You're anchoring yourself by criticizing other people's anchors. So if I spend all of my time if uh, criticizing antinatalists because of their silly anchors, well, one of my anchors now has become uh, not dealing with the horror of existence by ridiculing people for refusing to deal with the horror of existence themselves. So in a sense, um, I'm just as guilty of anchoring as everybody else that I'm criticizing for anchoring. And after a while, you start to question everything, and you get a little bit freaked out by it all, because you understand just what a gigantic concept this anchoring business actually is. You've decided that there's a set of rules in the universe. Now what? <laughs> you enforce the rules in order to forget about the fundamental nature of the universe. You're not actually trying to accomplish anything in as much as you're trying to take your mind off something. Um, and we're all guilty of this, and I don't really see how we couldn't be. Um, it's one of the bizarre paradoxes of existence that when you find a truth, or when you believe that you've found a truth, you then sit there and you think, okay, now I've got this truth, what do I do with it? Uh, well, you drop anchor and you uh, go from there. It's hard not to anchor yourself. And the world starts to look very absurd when you see the lengths to which you yourself will go to, um, to anchor yourself in order to make sense out of the universe and how you will use other people's anchors as examples of why your anchoring is so smart. You're tricking yourself, even as you say... Anchoring is a dumb concept, and anchoring is what other people do. That in itself is anchoring. <laughs> no wonder Zapfi uh, laughed so much. No wonder he was such a good comedian. Thank you.